Welcome to this Windows Computer and Technology channel. And uh, one of the questions that I've been asked is to talk about the different hardware of modern PCs, but specifically kind of a basic guide of how, what should I choose and how do I choose my PC if I start looking at the numbers. One of the first things you'll notice when you go to Best Buy or even online when you look at PCs, biggest problem is you've got thrown at you a bunch of numbers. A bunch of numbers that don't necessarily mean something. It's very important to understand that. So people will see, you know, oh, processor speed of 2 gigahertz. Oh, that one has a processor speed of 3 gigahertz. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything because you have to take into account other factors like the generation of that CPU. If you have a fifth generation 3 gigahertz CPU um, and you have a 10th generation 2 gigahertz CPU, the chances are that 2 gigahertz 10th generation is actually running faster because it's the way that the technology evolves. So do not look at speed, but look at generations for the CPU. And this is going to be this video. Um, I'm going to try to um, talk about other hardware parts and, and give a basic guide. Um, the rest will be mostly up to you, but hopefully with the basics, you'll have an understanding here. Two main processors you'll find on the market, AMD, Intel. Is one better than the other? Um, the latest AMDs are great. And I think that it's a serious consideration. It is also a serious consideration because for the same power, an AMD Ryzen CPU might actually have a PC cost a little less. But I've been a big fan always of Intel and always thought of Intel CPUs being the only thing you should buy. In old days, Intel was definitely more quality than, than AMD. Today, that is not as clear, but some indications still tend to uh, tell us that Intel processors are higher quality still today, but not by as big a margin as in the past. Now, this PC that I have here is an AMD processor. It um, is the first time ever that I buy an AMD machine. Uh, or processor in a machine, and, and it works great. But you know what? Um, if I would go with my gut feeling and have a good price, an Intel would probably still be my first choice as um, it tends to be higher quality in general. When you buy and you look at the CPU, don't look at the speed, look at the generation of that CPU. And the generation, you'll have it with its number. So the higher, in general, the higher the number on Intel, the more uh, the latest or the, the, the um, generation is closer and closer to you. We're somewhere around 12th generation right now. And what happens is that if you look at, for example, this number here, 6950, that's a sixth generation. This one is an NEA 20, it's a ninth generation. Look here, i9, which is the type of processor, um, is older in, to, in, in its uh, generation, a seventh generation rather than ninth, for example. So even within one type, you have to look at also what do you have. i3, i5, i7, and i9 are the main um, CPUs you'll see. In stores like Best Buy in general, you'll have i3, i5, and i7. i3 is very popular because it's the low end in performance in CPU. You want to avoid i3 for the most part. Whatever generation it is, i3 CPUs are slow compared to the other ones. i5 is a um, mid-range and it tends to be a pretty good performer. So if you don't want to put too much money, but you want to have something that works well, an i5 is actually not bad. So what you'll actually look at is the number. So you'll want an i5. But 
With that I5, you'll also want to have the highest number for the generation. So you'll want to have, in, for example, if I would look at an i5 uh, here, this is the ninth generation i5. Um, what do we have at the bottom there? We would have uh, a, let me go down here, so eighth generation i5, 8400, uh, so on. So you, what you want to have is the latest possible that you have. So if you got a ninth generation or a tenth generation, you know, each generation performs a little better than the one before. Not necessarily by a long shot, but you want to have the latest anyway. So these are all things to look at. i5, mid-range, usually pretty good for people that just, you know, do internet, watch videos, Netflix, do word processing, stuff like that. i5 is enough. i7, higher end, usually faster. i7 perform more operations per cycle in general than I, uh, i5 or i3. So an i7, if you want to have something that really runs, really runs fast, i7, once again, be careful. If you see an i7 at 3970, that's a third generation here. But you see an i7 at 8700, oh, that's the eighth generation. That is much more recent. So you have to look at these two numbers. The speed doesn't don't doesn't matter do not look at the speed the speed is a number that is not representative of really how perf the performance of a cpu in general so look mostly at buying something that is an i5 or higher and anything that is a ninth tenth generation um, nothing seventh or before especially if you want to have Windows 11, because a 7th generation will not be compatible. It's going to tell you that you can't have Windows 11. So 8th generation or later, i5 at least, i7 even better, you're going to have a rocking system there. So that's for the CPU. On the Ryzen side, if you do buy an AMD, look at the Ryzen generation. Is it a 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th? You want to have the latest generation possible and the Ryzen CPU. So that will help you. So if you got, you know, a 7th generation Ryzen, 8th generation Ryzen, of course, definitely going to be much better. A ninth generation, even better. So um, that's something that you can look on the AMD side for the latest generation. Be careful of that generation number because that's how people get fooled into buying a PC that they think is a good deal but you're getting ripped off because you're paying for a PC that has older technology. And once again, in Windows 11, it's important because if you're not up to par to the minimum requirements, you won't have Windows 11. And especially in 2022, I don't think you should buy any PCs that is not minimum requirement for the Windows 11. So this is a basic info. Um, if you have not catched the information or have not understood it totally at first glance, watch the video again and, and listen to the explanation again. But it's, it's not that difficult to, you know, look at what type of processor, so in an Intel i5 or higher, and the latest generation possible. And, of course, an AMD, latest generation possible of the Ryzen series and so on. And there's, of course, the thread reapers also if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching